Hello and welcome to Just My Thoughts. I'm Yos Khalil Ward. Thank you for tuning into the video. Yes, I know another video with me on screen. Um, today I want to talk about the Avengers Endgame game log. And it's basically what I do with all the Avengers movie. I do a game log where I have categories or awards and I give them out to the people in the movie. Um, this is probably going to be a two part series because this is a three hour movie and there are a few categories that I want to go over, but I don't want the video to be too long. So this is part one. Um, I hope you check out the other videos and enjoy. First award is the best teammate award. And for me, wait, before I get started, remember film is subjective. So you may not agree with me with whoever I pick for certain categories, or you might have your own categories. That's cool as well. Leave them in the comment section. Best teammate. For me, it's Ant-Man because he came up with the whole concept of time travel. Yes, Tony perfected it, but he wasn't really in the mood to like try it. Um, if Ant-Man ever comes out the quantum realm and go and go see the Avengers, um, what do they do exactly? They just sit there defeated, you know? So for me, he was the best teammate in the movie, just, you know, figuring things out at home with his daughter and then traveling all the way to New York. I wonder how long that took, but you know, to go to the Avengers and, you know, present this idea of time travel for, you know, to change what happened. Um, so for me, he was the best teammate in the movie. Uh, moving on, six man or six woman. And it's the award for someone who's not in the movie that much. But, you know, they make an impact. And for me, it was Captain Marvel. And I really enjoyed her in this film because after watching Captain Marvel, I know a lot of people were like, well, Captain Marvel is just going to go beat up Thanos. And she was in this movie probably... What, 10 minutes and she she did what she needed to do in the beginning you know she was she was cocky and confident she wanted to go kill Thanos she you know put him in the headlock they did their job and then she bounced you know she wasn't she wasn't hanging around you know kicking it with the Avengers all day and then when things got rough during the battle she came back took out the ship um had a little fight with Thanos showed her a little strength when when she when she took the headbutt from him and you know she had the, the moment with the women and that was it. You know, she didn't take over the movie. She wasn't overpowered or anything like that. Um, she was really strong. Uh, but Thanos did get the best of her when he punched her with the power stone. So it was a good showing for her. And they didn't like overshadow all the other Avengers with the power of Captain Marvel. Uh, the funniest Avenger. This has to go to Fat Thor. Um, the biggest surprise of the movie. Like it, it was shocking to see him that way. Like. I didn't expect it. You know, I don't think anybody expected Thor to look like that because in all the promos, they just kept showing Thor like in Wakanda when he first got Stormbreak and all that stuff. So just seeing Fat Thor, he was hilarious every time he was on screen. Um, I don't know. It was it was just amazing. Just looking. He was just so depressed in each scene. And but he also had emotional moments as well. But the funniest one for me is Fat Thor. And I, I love Fat Thor. I, a lot of people love Fat Thor. Um, best cameo. Um, it was tough. So I went with the ancient one and it was, she was also surprising. I kind of forgot about her. Um, I, I do enjoy Dr. Strange, but I did forget about the ancient one. Um, Tilda Swinton is great as the character and just seeing her in the battle of New York, just, you know, casually defeating bad guys, you know, on the roof. It was cool. And her conversation with Bruce, it, it explained a lot of things about taking the stones and like what happens about the alternate timeline and everything. And Bruce saying that when you put the stone back, you know, everything goes back to normal. And then when the moment hit, when he said that Dr. Strange gave the stone willingly and she just, she understood like, Oh, if he saw something, then it's the right play. And it was just cool seeing her, you know, because she was, she was really good in Dr. Strange and for her to just make this appearance in Avengers, it was, it was a good, it was a good moment. Uh, most surprising cameo for me is uh, Frigga, uh, Thor's mom, because Thor, the Dark World is not looked at as a a prominent movie in the MCU. You know, it's, it's, it's probably on the bottom of many people's list. And when people were making lists for movies to see before Infinity War, Thor, the Dark World was not on that list. It was like Ragnarok and, you know, the original Avengers, maybe an Iron Man movie here and there, you know, Civil War, stuff like that. Thor the Dark World, I didn't expect them to go there. And the fact that his mom was there and he had the conversation with her and she knew that he was from the future, it was it was perfect and it was emotional and it helped Thor, you know, understand that 
we all fail at life. We all fail at certain things, but you know, we could bounce back. And that, that made him, you know, bounce back. And he had the moment when he called his hammer back, which was cool. So it was really surprising to see her. Like they, out of all movies, they went to that movie and, and he got to talk to that character. Like he didn't speak to Odin or anything like that. He's talked to his mom, somebody he was really close with who he lost, you know, before the snap. Uh, the biggest surprise is it goes hand in hand. So them killing Thanos so fast in the movie, um, that threw me off because I was like, before the movie predictions, I thought, okay, they go see Thanos and he beats them up again. And, you know, then they, they, they go back home and rethink their strategy. That's what I really thought was going to happen. But to see him, you know, just chilling, making look like soup, you know, in his garden, like he wanted and all beat up. And they went in there real quick, you know, Thor took off his arms and they went for the head. Like I was like, like the crowd was shook a little bit and the time jump, you know, because they were all depressed at the end of infinity war. So losing is depressing. So to make it even worse for the characters, they defeated the bad guy, but they were still depressed. They still lost. So when they did the time jump five years later, it's like, wow, now you're sitting in that depression for a longer period of time. You know, there was probably like three weeks after Infinity War. That's when Endgame picks up. So to sit there for five years, like you killed Thanos and it's like still nothing you can do. It's even more depressing. And, you know, a lot of people are going to say, well, there are people that's five years older in the MCU. Well, yeah, but we don't know how many we don't know everyone who was dusted and who wasn't dusted. Maybe all the important people were dusted and the non-important people, you know, were there. So it was it was like, wow, they, they really went for it. They killed Thanos real fast. And they gave us a time jump and it was just right back, you know, back to back. And I was like, that's that's cool that they went for it, that they really put in the effort to, like, you know, tell this story of uh, biggest cheer. And again, this is going to differ, you know, depending on when when you saw the movie. I went the first night. I, I did see the movie three times now, but the first night I'm going off the first night. No, I'm go actually going off every viewing. But for me and every viewing, the biggest cheer was when Cap catches uh the hammer catches Thor hammer at the, you know, it hits Thanos and it comes back in his hand. That was by far the biggest cheer each time I went to go see this movie. And it was like people were just yelling stuff at the screen because uh, I guess we all expected it. But to see it on screen and the way he caught it, he just looked confident like like it was his hammer. And, you know, Thor's reaction, like I knew it. And that was it was a big moment. Um, secondary moment. That got a lot of cheers is when Spider-Man came back on screen. I guess a lot of people love Spider-Man. Like, but when he when he swung in there, you know, with the Guardians, it was like, oh, it was like, oh, Spider-Man is back. And they was cheering for that. Um, and the last one in this video, most emotional moment. Uh, again, this is gonna be different for everyone, but for me, it was Steve and Tony meeting again the first time when when um Iron Man gets off the ship and I thought it was very touching that Cap was the first one to run to get him off the ship because at the end, the last time we saw them together on screen was Civil War and Cap was literally slamming his shield into Iron Man's chest and walking off like that's big. And like during Infinity War, you yeah, Tony was going to call Cap and Cap had, you know, sent him a message saying, if you ever need help, call me or whatever. But years pass is like. They don't they still don't know what's going to happen when they meet. And when Infinity War happened and, you know, Iron Man was off Earth and Cap found out he was just like the best man is on the job. Like he he believes in Tony. And when when they're fighting their own battles, they don't know what's going on with the other person. You know, Tony's on another planet and, you know, and Steve is doing his own thing. So once the snap happens, you don't even know who's dead or who's, who's alive. Like each one of them saw people just dust away. So Tony's stuck on a on a on a ship, and he don't know who's home. He don't he even when he's leaving the map the message for Pepper, he's like, "I hope you're like you're still there." And you know, it was for me, it was like touching when he gets off, and Tony is really skinny, and and the first thing he says is like, "I lost a kid," and then Steve looks at him and he's like, "Tony, we lost." And that was just like, it hit right, you know, just everything they went through from the first Avengers movie, you know, where, you know, Steve is questioning Tony's commitment and saying, you know, he won't, you know, 
cover the line. He wants to uh, lay on the line, you know, for another soldier to cross and, you know, Steve calling them soldiers and stuff like that. It was just emotional to see them back together. And of course you had the, the spat where, you know, Tony just blacks out on, on Steve. So it, for me, that was the most emotional moment in the movie. And that's it for part one. Check out part two. I didn't want this video to be too long. So part two is coming up and check it out.